Hi everyone. Welcome to the video lesson course Introduction to MATLAB Software. This is our ninth video lesson. This video lesson teaches introduction to Simulink and how we can use Simulink to solve differential equations and to analyze basic process control systems. Simulink is a software package for modeling, simulating and analyzing dynamic systems. It can be referred as a companion software to MATLAB. Simulink contains two main windows. The library window which embedded with libraries of different blocks for different applications. The second window is the workspace window. We can model our system using the blocks in the libraries in this window. We will try to learn solving differential equations using Simulink. Let's take the same example that we discussed in the 8th video lesson. The differential equation is a first order ordinary differential equation dy by dt plus 0.5y is equal to step function u of t. Initial condition y of 0 is 0. So the first thing is we need to create a new Simulink file. Let's do that. In MATLAB we can type Simulink as the command or go to Simulink browser button and open it. We can see the library browser contains lot of models related to different areas of science and engineering. Before continuing, we have to rearrange our differential equation by taking all the terms into right hand side except the highest order of derivative. We need to create the mathematical model for our differential equation using few of these blocks in the workspace. In the library under commonly used models, we can find the integrator block. So we use the integrator block to solve differential equations. One important thing to keep in mind is, we have to use numbers of integrator blocks according to the order of derivatives. Since this example has only first order derivative, we need to use only one integrator block. In addition, we have to use the sum block to add or subtract operation. Gain block for multiplication. Scope block to see the output results and the unit step block from sources library. So let's create a new workspace. Then drag and drop the required blocks to the workspace. So here we drag an integrator sum block gain block, scope block and unit step block and place them accordingly. We can connect the root of calculations by connecting the blocks by dragging the arrow. So we connect them accordingly. The unit step function and the multiplication of y by minus 0 0.5 should be added together and it equals to the derivative. So we connect accordingly. When we connect the scope, we need to right click on the output arrow. Then the derivative is integrated and observed from the scope block. 
So this is the idea of modeling the block diagram for our differential equation. After the model is completed, we need to update the parameters according to our differential equation. Double click on the gain block and enter the gain as minus 0 0.5. In the integrator block, we should specify the initial condition. We can double click on the block and enter the initial condition. Now we have completed constructing our model for the given differential equation. Next we can run the system and see the results through the scope. The scope means the oscilloscope to observe the output response. First, open the scope by double clicking on that. Then run the system model. We can set the simulation time. For the moment, we take it as 10 seconds. We can click on the play button. So here we got the output response of the system in graphical mode. We can right click and auto scale the graph to see the better view of the graph. We will change the time duration to 20 and run again. Then auto scale the graph. Now we can see the system reaches to steady state response at around 15 seconds. According to the result, initially the system is unstable, which is referred as the transient state, and after some time it becomes to steady state. Let's continue the same approach to solve a second order ordinary differential equation for more practice. Our differential equation is second derivative of y over t plus 3 dy by dt plus 10y is equal to 20. And the initial conditions are 0 and 0. Let's first rearrange the equation in the proper way by taking all the terms except d squared y by dt squared. In this case, we need to drag two integrator blocks as the equation is in the second order. So we add two integrator blocks, then one sum block and two gain blocks as we have multiplication coefficients in the first derivative and the y terms. Right click and flip the gain blocks. We have to add a new block for constant as we have a constant value of 20. Finally, a score block to see the output result. Double click on the sum block and change the connections as plus minus minus so that we can so that we can enter positive coefficients to the gain blocks. So let's connect them according to our differential equation. First derivative and y term 
should go through the gain blocks and subtract it to the constant. That equals to the second order derivative. So that is the idea of this system model. Enter the gain values as 3 for first derivative gain and 10 for gain of y. Enter the constant value as 20. Then enter the initial values for the two integrator blocks. In this example, both of them are 0. We can run the system model after opening the scope. Right click and auto scale the generated graph. Here we can see the output response. There is a transient state, peak, drop and steady state for the output response. Like this, you can use Simulink to model systems related to engineering problems and solve them easily by logical approach than a programming approach. To summarize, in this lesson, we got introduced to Simulink and practiced two examples on constructing and solving system models based on ordinary differential equations in Simulink. In the next video lesson, let's discuss about basic control loop and how Simulink is used to model control loops. So until we meet with our next lesson, have a nice day and goodbye.